All right, so what do we got? most important thing, how many how many freshmen and sophomores do you have on this team? <laughs> uh, 87, because they haven't moved to their junior year yet, so you keep the same number as you had last year. Wait, that, that doesn't make any sense. Makes great sense. We had 87 freshmen and sophomores yeah. last fall. They're still freshmen and sophomores right now. <laughs> okay, technically. So we got 87. All right, next season. Oh, I don't know, I'm counting. Okay. Do you, you've had three recruiting cycles now. Do you feel like you've been able to restock this team with the talent you need to win? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just our numbers to practice. So we have 90 plus kids. I think the last two springs we had 60. So, um, you know, our first spring, thank goodness we had a break because I don't know if our kids could have gone 15 days straight. So, um, you know, we're running three groups. So the ones get reps, the twos get reps, the three gets reps. And our reps are always equals, but it's, it used to be ones and then half of the twos because we didn't really have twos. And then the ones are back out on the field. So I think from a training standpoint, you're looking at the numbers allow you to train at a certain level that you need to perform. So we're, we're excited about the numbers and, you know, it's about getting better every day like we always talk about. So we're gonna, we had a really good Tuesday. Well, now we're trying to plan on having a really good Thursday. You had Austin Burton going to the transfer portal. What's it like to lose your backup quarterback? I think it's college football, 2020. You know, you played the college football playoffs last year. 75% of the quarterbacks in the playoffs were transfers. So that's just the nature of the beast. If you're not the starter at your school, you're probably looking to go somewhere else. There aren't many kids out there that stay for, you know, I think Aaron Gordon at Washington State is really the exception to the rule. He stayed for five years, you know, had Luke Falk and Kalinsky ahead of him, and then they brought Gardner Minshew in as a transfer that played ahead of him, and then finally in his last year he played and played as good as anybody in the country. But I think that story is, is uh, probably not a story that's going to be written much anymore. If kids aren't playing at one place, they're going to look to go play at another place. So we're not, we understand it. So I didn't think we'd, we'd, we'd keep and most quarterbacks, I think you kind of plan on it too. That's why you got to take quarterbacks every year because they, if, <laughs> if you have a young quarterback that's playing, in which we've had, you know, so Dorian played as a freshman and as a sophomore, then the other kids that are on those classes probably aren't going to stay. So. Where, where does that leave your quarterback depth? You only have one guy on this team who's thrown a pass at the college level. Yeah, a lot better than it's been in the last two years. <laughs> so I look at it that way. You know what I mean? We played in our first year, the two quarterbacks that played weren't even with us in the spring. You know, so Wilton didn't practice in this for the spring two years ago, nor did it, neither did Dorian. And those are the two quarterbacks I played for. So, um, you know, I, I, I think, again, you, you, you look to, if you look at our quarterback, that's what I'm really excited about is our, our starting quarterback has two years' experience. So he's going into year three and had a really good training session the other day. You know, the, the, the good part is Colson Yankoff is eligible now. You know, he was, he was ineligible because of the transfer rule last year. So, you know, you get a chance to really look at Colson. We didn't put Colson in much with the twos and the threes because we knew Colson had to sit for the entire year. So now you're getting quality reps out of him and, and you watch the other kids grow. So that's part of the process. You, cool. you, you go into the, the uh, this with the mindset that the line is your, port, your starting quarterback? I mean, we tell them everything's open, but kids know who the best players are. Just like, you know, the our defensive line, all of them are all open. But if you ask any kid on this team, they consider Oso starter. Yeah. For us, we just don't talk about starters. We just talk about getting reps. So we don't post a depth chart every day and say, this is our starting nose guard. This is our starting defensive end. This is our starting linebacker. It's who's in with the ones, who's in with the twos. And as a coaching staff, as I told our coach, I don't care. It doesn't bother me that if Bo Calvert's taking the first rep in period one at Mike Linebacker, in period two, DP switches that to another guy. That, that, I'm, not, I'm not concerned with it because we're not playing a game for them. You know, so we don't spend time talking about it, but um, I think kids are smart. You know, they know where Dory is right now and, and his progression and where, what it is, and that's what it, that's the decision kids have to make. Do they think they can beat him out? Then maybe you stay. If you don't think you're going to beat him out, then maybe you're looking to go somewhere else. Coach, what was your reaction to Dorian's Snapchat about UCLA? Um, we talked to him about it. I think he was having a bad day, and just you know, you got to make sure that um, you have some responsibility. You know, especially being a, a quarterback at a power five school, you live your life in a fishbowl, and, and those are things that I think you need to kind of think before you tweet. It's just a real good learning experience for him on social media. So, what, we what, talked about it. What was it about? He was, was having a bad day. Was there any discipline because of that Snapchat for him? No. Do you pull your own? your initial um, maybe hopes or expectations for where this program might be 
about heading into year three? And I don't, how does that we drive a, 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 We're on a daily basis. We're, I mean, you and Ben should have a great conversation <laughs> if you guys want to share on long-term things. We're, ben we want to have, yeah, and that's weird because Ben tries to be collaborative, but then is, doesn't live it, Ben? That's interesting. Are you talking um, about his clothing? or <clears throat> No. We already know that he's actually, he's got sponsors. We're, we're working on that for you, too. I know, I like it. I love it. Big love it. <laughs> You're um, not a big picture guy like it says on uh, Ben's shirt. I am when it comes to the movies. I love pictures. <laughs> but for us, it's a, we're about the process. We're about getting better on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, can we put together and start to string together consecutive days of being really, really good? I think if you spend too much time taking at the big picture, you don't take care of the details. And this game is about details, and that's what we're really working on on a daily basis is getting our kids to understand that. And I think in this generation, too, with kids, if the farther they look down the road, the harder it is for them. It's about what happens down the road for us is because of the face and the foundation that we, we put together. So, you know, to use the analogy of building a house, you build the foundation first and you continue to build. And, and then after you get the foundation built, then you put the first floor together. But you're not thinking about what the rooftop deck looks like because if you look about the rooftop deck, you're probably your house is going to crumble. So, you know, we're looking at let's have a really good Thursday. That's kind of where we are right now. So. Coach, is Elijah Wade still with the program? Elijah Wade is not with us. He's not. So. Is David Preby? Preby, sir. Okay. Can you see him on Tuesday? He was here. Okay. I, he has a class, Okay. so I think he leaves early. Same with Michael Martinez? I thought he left early. Mike's sick. Mike didn't Mike's leave sick. early. Mike was okay. just sick. So, but Mike's here. Okay. But Preeb's on Tuesdays and Thursdays, has a class. And so he's here for maybe the first hour. Ish. I don't know exactly what time he leaves, but it's so we can get to his class sometimes. Yeah. You, you, ma you made the decision. What have you seen from these new guys? You have five high schoolers come in this this winter term. Yep. What have you seen from them? Um, I was impressed for, you know, really with all of them just for day one. Usually, and I've been in this for a little bit, you can see the kids stick out because they're not sure where to go. You know, so the whistle blows and the receivers are running down there, and then there's a receiver running over to the D line girl going. But Logan did a really nice job. Um, picking things up I think he's a real he loves football so I think it was important for him from a study standpoint to make sure that he was locked in and dialed into everything and did a great job and then the defensive guys um, Che and Miles at outside linebacker Kenny's playing inside linebacker right now I thought all those kids you know showed up a little bit on tape and you just kind of go oh, okay that's interesting good to see good to see that and you know, I think they, they they make typical mistakes that most kids make on day one, but they did not stand out because they weren't sure about what they were doing or where they were going. So um, the five of them plus the two JC kids, Mitchell and, and uh, Caleb, did both, all seven of them. Heads up. Good save. Um, all seven of them, I thought, I think our coaching staff was pleased with them on day one. So. You, you mentioned the, the realities of just college football in 2020 with regards to back and quarterbacks transferring. Uh, the, the ease of which players could transfer these days in general, just how difficult has that been in terms of building consistency with a program or just where you're at? Again, I think it's part of, if you want to go non-big picture, like we don't have anything to say with it, so I don't think you should complain about any difficulties on here. That's the rule, that's the rule. So how do you deal with it? You have to spend a little bit more time on your roster management, but that's, that's the nature of the game. I mean, that's... You can sit there and lament all you want. Like, I don't like this rule and I think it's wrong, but the rule's in place, the rule's in place. So once the rule's in place, I think you need to move on to how do you manage that situation. There's going to be more transfers in 2020. I guarantee there'll be more transfers in 2021. So, so when I hear guys complain about the rule, or the, that's not getting you anywhere. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? So part of that process is is you gotta you got you to plan. you got to know where you are from a roster management standpoint. You have a certain number of players that you could have on scholarships. You have certain numbers of players that you can take um, on a yearly basis, and there's going to be times where your numbers, and, and it's we've been there for, we'll, be, we'll go into year three, but we're still not at 85 scholarships just because the nature of the game. Maybe they change that rule, maybe they don't change But if they don't change the rule, you just can't sit there and complain about it. You just have to, to make do. I think we've done a really good job with our walk-on program because you know, you, you're going to be forced to play some more walk-ons if, if you lose scholarship players and you're not allowed to replace them. They're, and what I mean by not allowed to replace them is you have 85 full scholarships, but you can only take 25 kids a year. So if, if you taking 25 kids gets you to 70, you're 15 kids short. So you better do a good job in your walk-on program instead of just complaining about it. So you, I think that's the reality and the nature of what we're, we're dealing with. And I don't look at it as hard. I don't think that's just what you have to do. So. You're, all right, so your defense in two years, 102 nationally first year, 112 second year. What made you want to retain 
Coach Azanaro as your defensive coordinator? I've known Jerry for a long time, and I think um, his number one as a mentor and a role model, I think he's tremendous. I think uh, he's an excellent teacher. He's coached football at all levels and has been very successful. Um, so I, I don't think a snapshot of one season means anything. You know, again, living just in the current moment. You know, this isn't a finite plan. This is an infinite plan. And, you know, it's about you want to sustain long-term success. A lot of it is to uh, – there's a lot of continuity there, I think. I think when you change everything and just throw out everything and then you have to learn a whole new system, well, then we need a year or two to learn the whole new system. And then once we do that, then we're on that, that ongoing cycle of it just changes and changes. And I, I think he's a hell of a football coach. He only got a one-year contract. Is that a reflection of – No, where I think he... we have a couple guys on one-year contracts. So. All the Jason Cafusi is on a one-year contract. Well, that's he, Frank Wintrich is Frank Wintrich is now on a one-year contract. Well, but so that's that's what he just started a two-year deal. And yep. he's on one. He's got one year left. And Frank Frank just re-upped on a one-year deal. But all the other assistants who were expiring got yeah, two-year deals. Yeah, I look at everybody as an individual. You were not a socialist, so we don't we don't group things together. And I sit down with everybody and talk to them about what their plans are and where we're headed and how that all works. So that's so why was his on one year? Because that was the discussion that the three of us had. Did you have discussions? I know you had discussions with Dan Guerrero about your staff after the season. What? what, what I did what not did have any discussions with Dan about my staff after the season. So he didn't talk my to My direct report is Josh Ruppels. Okay. So I talked so to Josh. you didn't talk to the athletic director. I talked to Josh. Okay. So that's my direct report. You didn't talk to Dan Guerrero about the football program after the season last year? I talked with Josh. Okay. And did Josh t talk about staff changes? Josh talked you? about... How do we improve everything around here? That's what we, I mean, and I talk to Josh daily, you know, so those are always ongoing conversations about everything from what we feed our players to academic support to how much tape in the training room to every single thing that touches our football program. So. Antonio Maffi was moved to offensive line. When was that decision made and how's his development? Neo came in in the offseason and said he'd think he'd like to play O-line. So when he came back in the winter and... Um, he said, let's give him a shot. So how's he, I how's he, how's he, he did it. He did a nice job in day one. So we, I was I was pleased with Neil uh, on Tuesday. I mean, he's a big, strong, physical kid. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of this is to have a kid play a position that he doesn't want to play isn't productive for him. Or, and, he, and are they going to put everything into that? You know what I mean? And I think he felt like uh, he wanted to see what it would be like as an offensive lineman here. And right now he's in the hunt with – with those other guys over there. So. Is there any concern for depth at defensive line with Moffey moving there, losing Wade, Andrus with an ACL? No, Martin I think will be fine. Martin's working extremely well. You see him around here. Um, he's doing a, a really good job in terms of his rehab, and so I, I don't have any questions that when we start in uh, August, we come back and get ready for the opener, that Martin will be cleared and ready to go. Um, but I think our numbers, when you look at them, again, we talked a little bit about that. Um, you know, we're three deep everywhere. I think in some positions, four deep. So I think we've got, you know, you still have Stephen Mason, still have Daytona Jackson. Still got, you got a lot of guys over there that, that can play. Tyler Manoa, who's played a lot of football for us. So um, I don't think it's a concern for us right now. I mean, we'd all love to have 15 guys in there. But um, Oda was there. You know, Osa, Oda, Mason, Daytona, Tyler. We've got a lot of kids who played a lot of football. We didn't graduate. We also didn't graduate in D-linemen, so... You know, that, that's not a really big concern. And that's, again, going back to the roster management part. You have to deal with it, whether a, a kid, you know, is a position switch um, in, in Neil's situation or a quarterback transfer. Those are just those are things you got to deal with. You know, so I don't – we don't lose sleep over it. It's just, all right, what do we do now? Just no different than if you're in a game and they say, hey, Osa sprained his ankle and can't play. Okay, what do we do now? You don't call you don't call timeout and say we don't you know we we just lost one of our best defensive linemen. Do you guys feel sorry for us? That doesn't doesn't work that way. It's just you get the next guy up, get the next guy ready, and then you hope in his preparation and when he goes out in the field, he he shines and shows you something that he does. So the, the uh, coronavirus has become kind of a thing now. What's the level of well, concern <laughs> that I wouldn't call it a thing? <laughs> I would say it's a, from almost in a pandemic state right now. So I think right. it's something that. Everybody needs to be really serious about it. Is, is that endangering the spring game right now? I, I, we do everything off of what our athletic department. We've got a memo from the AD, from the athletic department itself, in terms of how everything's going to be handled. And nothing's, um, nothing at this point in time has been canceled. You know, and again, we're we're worried about Thursday. I'm not worried about the 18th at this point in time. But in the coronavirus itself, it's you know it's a very very serious thing. And when, anytime you get 
a situation like that, you better be prepared. And I think you know we've gotten we've gotten daily updates from the chancellor and from the athletic department on, on where what our status is here at UCLA, and I think we take all those very seriously. And whatever they say, you know, I'm not. If they say that we can't have a, a gathering because of it, then, then we won't have a gathering because of it. That I'm not. There's no reason for us to, to put anybody in harm's way. You know, we're just, we're just trying to practice football. And our, and our spring game is literally the 15th practice, so it's not, you know, we'll, we'll deal with it as it comes. But I think, you know, it, it, as you look around, and it is dominating the news, like you said, but it should dominate the news. I think it's something that's very serious. And we all, what we have to do is defer to the experts. And I'm certainly not an expert. So. Thanks, Coach. Thank all you. Right. Thanks, Coach.